Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, of course, I've been doing so many videos today. I think this is video number five. Uh, like I said, I was on a marathon of doing videos today. And I, I promised you that I was going to come back and talk about uh, an incredible miracle that happened to me when I was working, a young guy there working at Port St. Lucie Nuclear Power Plant in South Florida, actually in Fort Pierce, Florida, on Hutchinson Island. And uh, before I actually get into that, though, I, I did a video over on Patreon. This one is actually going to air here on Israeli News Live. Uh, and, and I did another one here about uh, the nuclear power plant, an incredible uh, vision that I had uh, during about the same time that this other miracle took place. And uh, I shared that over on Patreon. But I also did a very in-depth look at Planet X uh, Atlantis and uh, uh, the Exodus story, the uh, using CERN, the dimensions, how all that played into the uh, Exodus of Egypt, the sinking of Atlantis. We shared that over on our Patreon channel. But there was one thing I, f I thought I was actually bringing it out on the video and I forgot to bring it out. Uh, it was actually, there were two different witnesses of the time frame, the chronology. And the one that I forgot to bring out, though, the correct chronology of the Atlantis uh, was done here by uh, Gorgios Diaz uh, Montexano uh, back on the 31st, 2017. I don't know, I don't know that, that word there, Enero, what month that is, but the month of Enero. Okay, so anyway, this man here, this was in the Russian language. It was, uh, I found it on Yandex, and I was searching because I felt like that Atlantis probably did not go down 9,000 years according to Plato uh, B BC, but rather that there may have been something wrong with that dating and that time frame. Well, oddly enough, this man here, along with another one, uh, it, it had come to that same conclusion. And more and more scholars are beginning to question that. They believe that Plato maybe had intentionally changed the date for whatever reason by 10 times. So it wasn't actually 9,000, but 900 years difference in the time frame. Anyway, the correct chronology, and I'll just quickly bring this out though, uh, Atlantis and their timeline would have actually fell between either the flood itself or the Exodus story of Egypt. In both cases, if you look at the Colburn document, uh, some call it the Colburn Bible, I don't, but some do. Uh, the Colburn document does, uh, attest that Planet X in both cases passes during those two events. I'll just read some of the highlighted real quick and then I want to get into this wonderful miracle that took place many years ago. Uh, but anyway, it says right here is, uh, uh, better read a little bit more than just that though. My, my most updated and rigorous reply up to this very moment is that the end of Atlantis, that is when it was destroyed by a great seismic tsunami cataclysm, must have happened at some point between 2600 and 1550 BC and it had nothing to do with volcanoes as the reading of primary sources made clear. This is the most accurate time frame that I have been able to establish according to the existing evidence and circumstantial proof. Atlantis timeline can be summarized as follows. Now I just kind of highlight a few of the things. 570 BC, the Olympian god ruled Zeus, Hades, and Poisdon divided a world among themselves after beating out the Titans and it's stated in the Cretius. Uh, thus, uh, and I can't pronounce any of these names right, so forgive me, I'm probably going to butcher them. Uh, Hephaestus and Athenia received uh, Attica and the prim primitive Athens was founded by uh, Cecrops or uh, Urchian who was born from Hephaestus and Gaia and the same time Poisdon received Atlantis, another island in the Atlantic, which had different native name by then. That's, forget all that, right? So anyway, he did have a son, though. He marries this earthly woman, it says, which goes to go back into the fallen angels, if you think about it, right? Uh, Atlas was the Greek translation of a name, meaning the one supporting, raising, and upholding the sky. Uh, the Egyptian god uh, Suchu and, and Shu, who was equivalent to the god of Atlas, at the beginning of time and poison built, Cleotos, a home on a high hill at the very center of the island. Uh, but anyway, the point is, is he goes into a lot of his different arguments here 
Uh, and he comes to the conclusion that at some point between 2700 BC and 1550 BC is the most recent possible date for the Atlanteans were defeated by the Athenians and sometime after, such as they vaguely indicated in the uh, Timaeus, and the primitive Athens was destroyed by a great cataclysm. Now, from intel I'd gathered quite a long time ago there, is that Atlantis had learned to build a very CERN type of device from the fallen angels, and they're the ones that actually caused the binary system to enter into our own solar system, and that uh, in or yeah, in that in effect sunk Atlantis, and very well may have been how Moses was able to prophesy of all the events that would happen to Egypt, because not just Atlantis, but the rest of the world would be affected, and maybe that was part of the plan. Uh, there were, there are, there has been connections made between Egypt and Atlantis. Uh, that they had some sort of connection there to begin with. And like I said, this may have been the reason why the judgment was brought, much like what we see of Malachi 4. Anyway, check out the video on Patreon. I know it's going to bless your heart if you get to see that there. Uh, but I want to go back to the Port St. Lucie nuclear power plant and what happened years ago. Um, this, of course, probably be airing here on Sunday. Uh, so happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there uh, if you celebrate those type things. But I shared the miracle about the, the vision I had about the crane on Unit, Unit 2 Turbine Deck over on Patreon. and But before that actually took place, one night, I was actually at this time, I was working night shift because we had a rotating shifts. Every so, so many weeks you go from days to nights to uh, graveyard, etc., and work whatever shifts that you might be working at the time. Um, if I remember right, though, we did 12-hour shifts, so we had days and nights, graveyard or, or daytime shift. But I was working there, and I was working at night, and I would, when I would go to the break room there that we had, uh, I always loved to read the Bible. I, I carried my Bible everywhere I went, and every moment that I had to be able to read the Bible, I was reading it. And, uh, and I actually read the entire Bible in three months. Or the Old Testament, I should say. I read the Old Testament in three months. And at that time, I, was, I had been, re that's when I first started doing it. I just really, I, I never was much of a reader. And so I prayed and I asked our Father, I said, Lord, I said, I really want to be able to read the Bible. I said, I've never been able to do that. I said, is, you know, please help me place it in my heart to read the entire Bible. And so I'd started and I had been reading. Uh, I'd read through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy. I'd gone through all the books of Moses. I was into Joshua, somewhere along there. And I was really beginning to get frustrated because I would read things and I just didn't get it. I couldn't understand why was this or why was that and why did God do this or why did God do that? Uh, and I wanted to know in depth. I really had a heart to know the depth of things biblically. And so I'm coming down. And in fact, if you're looking at this image here on the screen, I don't know if I could actually blow it up or not. Let me just see. Maybe I can. Um, I can't, can't. Oh, yeah, I can move it about. Okay, here we go there. Uh, there's these buildings that you see here. There's all kinds of things that go on inside of there, the stair stairwells, things like that. I'm coming down. I'm, I'm here near this Unit 2 turbine deck, and I'm coming down the stairs inside of this one particular uh, facility. And as I'm coming down the stairs, suddenly the Holy Spirit come upon me in such a powerful way. And... I experienced revelation on a supernatural level like you could never even begin to understand. It was like waves coming over me. And the Lord was just placing within me uh, the revelation of what I had been reading and connecting all of the dots and, and connecting it this direction and that direction it's such a massive speed that it came into my heart. 
I could not even for the life of me keep up with it. I seen a friend of mine, John. I didn't have a pen or anything. I seen a friend of mine, John, uh, somewhere. I don't know if it was in the stairwell or what. I don't remember now. But when I did, I asked him quickly. I said, John, do you got a pen I can borrow? I, I, was, I was literally couldn't, almost couldn't even speak. I was so overwhelmed by this revelation. He gave me a, a, a pen, and I began to scribble as fast as I could. Just little pieces, that I'm trying to remember, because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how will I ever remember this? How will I ever remember this? I, I was frantic. And I was writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And finally, I gave him back his pen. I thanked him for using it. And finally, it calmed down. And I'm sitting there, and, and to the right over here, to the far side of this screen right there, I don't know, maybe you can see the mouse here. There's a little building down here, a little small building. And I don't know if the same building it was there when I was there, but I think it is. Uh, this is where our break room was at. Very large break room. Now, granted, we're working the graveyard shift. There's not hardly anybody there. There's another break room inside one of these other buildings over here. Very nice. But this is the one where, where, where most of us, we went to. And uh, we, have, we have a fancy lunchroom and stuff like that at the facility here. But, but at that time, I went in there to the break room. And John was sitting. There was a long row of tables there. Um, maybe like folding tables. Maybe it was like three long. And then there were several rows of those. And when you first come into the break room... As you enter the door, let's say I enter the door and as I'm looking at you there, right straight in there, he's at the very far end sitting at the table reading a book. And he's the only one in there. And to your right is was another table there and there was a, uh, and I will never forget, it was a Mr. Coffee Coffee Maker. A white one at that, a white one that sat over there on the table. There was a microwave. Uh, I don't know what all else was there. And I had put my stuff down, put my Bible down. I was going to start reading my Bible there, and I was eating my lunch there. And I remember when I uh, walked over, I walked over there by the, by the, um, uh, the microwave, and I was looking for a fork or something like that. And I look at the coffee maker, and there's two can openers sitting on top of that coffee maker. Never forget it as long as I live. And I picked up both those can openers, knowing good and well there was no fork sitting there. And I pick them up, and I'm holding them in my hands, and I look back down at the coffee maker. Now there's nothing on the coffee maker, because I just picked up the two can openers, and I set them back down, and I'm thinking to myself, oh God, I, 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 what am I, losing my mind? I know good and well there was no fork there. And so I put them back down in frustration and I look at that and I'm like, why would I do that? And I went over there and I sat down and it was just me and John. I'm sitting at the end of the table, actually just looking straight down. John's sitting down there at the other end, looking in the opposite direction there. I mean, I can see his profile of his face there. And, uh, and when he'd given me the pin earlier, I didn't mention this there, he had it in his ear. And I began to read the Bible again. And when I did, suddenly, the Holy Spirit come back upon me. And again, that revelation began to pour so rapidly. And I mean, I've had revelation, but never to this day have I ever had revelation that was so powerful like I did back then. The amount of information that came within my heart it took me six months to process that much information. And to this day, I'll probably never remember all of it. And, and God was just connecting it so I would understand why this was written or why that was written. And I got frantic because I wanted to take notes again. But I didn't want to bother John. And all of a sudden... I heard the Lord speak to me audibly. And he said, do you need a pen? Just like I'm speaking to you now, I heard him as plain as day as that. He said, do you need a pen? I said, yes, Lord, I do. He said, turn around. You'll have a pen. 
I turned and friend, God is my judge. I'm telling you the honest to God's truth. I turned and looked right over to that Mr. Coffee Maker sitting over there in the corner. And from where I was sitting, I could see a pen sitting on top right there between the can openers. I got up. I walked over. I picked it up in my hand in almost disbelief. And I knew then that's why I had picked those can openers up or just, just a few moments ago because God wanted me to know there was nothing there but those can openers. So I wasn't crazy. He had me do it intentionally. And I sat down and I looked at that pen. Now he didn't create the pen, but he placed it there. Funny thing is, it was a paper mate. I'll never forget that as long as I live. It was a black paper mate. And I'm looking at that pen, and then the devil shows up. And he tries to put in my mind, oh, John put that pen over there. That's not a miracle. And I knew good and well that was a lie out of hell. And I looked up over at John, and of course the pen wasn't in his ear like that the way he had it when he gave it to me earlier. And the devil said again to me, he said, that, see there, pen's gone, it's not in his ear, it's because he put it there. And I said to my, in my heart, I said, Satan, you're a liar. And then the Lord spoke to me audibly again. Now Satan don't speak audibly. He just puts things in your mind. He affects your mind. See, but God spoke to me and it was like I heard him just with my own two ears, like I'd hear my daughter or my, my wife talk to me here. And right about that moment, the Lord spoke to me again and he said, ask him for his pen. And I said back, I said, no, Lord, I won't do that to you. I said, I know you put that pen there. And then the Lord spoke to me again and he said, I said, ask him for his pen. And I said, John, he said, yes, yeah, Steve. I said, you have that pen I borrowed from you earlier? He said, sure do. He's wearing a ball cap and he pulled the ball cap off of his head and reached inside the ball cap, pulled the pen out. Now earlier it was in his ear. That's why Satan tried to get me to think that it was a lie. And he tossed the pen over to me and it landed beside me and there I had that one in my hand. I said, thank you, John, I got one, I don't need it. And I slid it back across the table. See, God can do anything at any time. You have a need, just ask him. And even times when you don't know to ask him, you just have a need, he will provide. He is our provider. He's our everything. So whatever you have need of tonight, won't you believe him? Trust in him? He's got everything under control. I want to pray with you just real quick as we close this tonight. Heavenly Father, I don't know why I'm even praying like this, Lord. I don't always do this, Father, but maybe there's somebody out there. I know there's many people. I don't have to wonder, Lord. There are people with needs. And they've got all kinds of needs, Father. They might be financial. They might need, need healing. I, I, I get that all the time. In fact, there's a precious sister that listens to the broadcast very faithfully that sent me an email the other day to be praying for her children. So, Father God, I'm asking you, Lord, would you help and answer the needs? And I get so many people, even in the comments, when I open comments, they'll ask me to pray for them. Father, I'm praying for them tonight, each and every one, because I can't remember who all they are, but you do, Lord. And you see the request even when I don't see the request, Father. So I ask, Father, would you hear and answer in Jesus Christ's name?
the name above every name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being supportive of the work we do here. We love you. I trust that you have a blessed weekend. Good day.